Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday School. This week we'll be learning about Moses and the Ten Plagues. It is found in the book of Exodus and we will once again be reading from the King Fisher's Children's Bible. Ready? Let's begin. After his encounter with God, Moses returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and asked to be allowed to go back to his people in Egypt. Jethro agreed and wished him well, so Moses set off, taking with him his wife and sons and the miraculous staff that God had given him. And again God spoke to Moses, Do not be afraid to go into Egypt, God said. The people who wanted to kill you are dead, and there is a new Pharaoh. When you get there, Go to Pharaoh's palace and be sure to carry out the miracles that I have shown you. I will harden his heart and make him so stubborn that at first he will refuse to let the people go, but tell him that Israel is as precious to me as my firstborn son, and if he refuses to let my son go, then I will kill his own firstborn son in return. Meanwhile, God had spoken to Aaron and told him to go into the desert to meet his brother upon Mount Sinai. And when the brothers met, they embraced each other and they set off for Egypt, where they gathered together all the leaders of the Israelites. Aaron told them everything that God had said, and Moses, to convince them of the truth, performed the miracles that he had been shown. And the leaders were amazed and they worshipped the Lord. Now Moses and Aaron went to the court of Pharaoh and spoke with him. This is what the Lord God commands, they said. You must let the Israelites go so that they can travel for three days into the desert and worship God. If not, plague and death will surely follow. Pharaoh was unmoved. What do you mean by keeping your people from their duties, he said. Get them back to work immediately. Then he turned to his slave drivers and said, From now on, stop giving the Israelites straw to make bricks. Let them gather their own straw. But don't let their quota of bricks drop. They obviously don't have enough work, or they wouldn't be bothering me with this nonsense about going into the desert to worship their God. Get them to work harder. This harsh ruling made some of the Israelites angry with Moses and Aaron. Look at what you two have done, they said. You've made the Egyptians hate us even more. Moses could see their point, and when he was alone, he cried out to God, saying, O oh Lord, why did you send me to Pharaoh? It has only made things worse, and he has made our lives unbearable now and you have done nothing to help us gain our freedom. But the Lord said to Moses, It is time for you to see what I will do to Pharaoh. I will force him to let my people go, for I am the Lord your God, who appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and promised them the land of Canaan. I have heard the groaning of the Israelites kept in slavery within Egypt, and I have not forgotten my covenant with them. Tell them that I will stretch out my arm to deliver them from their captivity. They are my people, and I am their God. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but their spirits had been so crushed by the Egyptians' cruelty that they did not listen. If even the Israelites will not listen to me, said Moses, why should I go to Pharaoh? Go to Pharaoh again, said God. At first he will not listen, but I will bring such punishments upon him that he will be forced to recognize that I am the Almighty. Back at the palace, Moses and Aaron presented their demands again. Moses knew that he was not a good speaker, so, as God had instructed, he let Aaron speak for him. Pharaoh was not persuaded, and he challenged the two of them to prove their power. And so Aaron took the staff and threw it upon the floor. Instantly, it became a writhing snake. 
Then Pharaoh summoned his own magicians, and they did the same in turn. Yet no sooner had their staffs turned into snakes than Aaron's snake slithered over to them and swallowed them up. Even after his demonstration, Pharaoh refused to listen. He sent Moses and Aaron away, not realizing what more terrible things were to come. Seeing that Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go, God said to Moses, Go down to the Nile River tomorrow and arrange to meet Pharaoh there. Tell him that because he has not freed my people, you will strike the water with your staff and turn the river to blood. Tell him also that the fish in the river will die, the river will stink, and the Egyptians will not be able to drink from it. And tell Aaron to take the staff and wave it over every stretch of water in the lands so that river, streams, and ponds even the contents of barrels and stone jars will turn to blood. Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded, and there was blood throughout the land of Egypt. But the Egyptians dug holes along the Nile to get fresh drinking water, and Pharaoh's resolve did not weaken. So the Lord said to Moses, Go back to Pharaoh and tell him that if he does not free the Israelites, I will unleash a plague of frogs. They will be everywhere. The river will be choked with them. The palace will be full of them. And even his bed will be crawling with them. Tell him that the frogs will get into people's clothes and into their hair and into their food and wine. Pharaoh, however, ignored this threat too, and so Aaron stretched out the staff, and suddenly, frogs everywhere. People found them hopping through their houses and even sitting in their cooking pots. Pharaoh begged Moses and Aaron to remove the frogs, but no sooner had they done that than his heart once again hardened, and he refused to let the Israelites go. Then Moses told Aaron to stretch out his staff and strike the ground, turning the dust into filthy lice that infested men, women, children, and animals throughout the whole of Egypt. But still Pharaoh did not budge. And so God commanded Moses to send a swarm of flies which descended over Egypt and blackened the skies, sparing only Goshen, where the Israelites lived. The flies crawled over everything and everybody, and there was no relief from their constant buzzing. Send the flies away, pleaded Pharaoh. Then you can go into the desert and worship your god. The next day the flies had gone, but the Pharaoh was as stubborn as ever. And God then told Moses to tell Pharaoh that if he did not relent, a terrible disease would strike every animal in the country, and only the Israelites' herds would survive. The next day, the Egyptians awoke to find all their animals dead. Cattle, sheep, and goats litter the fields. Donkeys and camels lay dead in the streets. But even this did not persuade Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, and neither did the plague of boils which erupted in open sores and on the hands and bodies and faces of the Egyptians. Pharaoh was horrified to see his wives and daughters scarred by ugly festering sores, but he did not give in, even when a plague of hailstones devastated the Egyptians' crops and when a plague of millions of locusts stripped bare the trees and plants, his heart remained hard. So God told Moses to stretch out his hand toward heaven and bring darkness to cover the land of Egypt. For three days, the country was plunged into darkness. No one had ever experienced this before. Candles would not light. Fires would not burn. No one could see a thing except for the Israelites, whose homes were filled with light. 
finally Pharaoh called for Moses and said that the Israelites could go on one condition. They had to leave their animals behind. This, however, was unacceptable to Moses. Without our animals, he told Pharaoh, we will not be able to make our sacrifices to God. The beasts must come too. Then you will stay, said Pharaoh to Moses in fury. Get out of my sight. If I ever see you again, you will die. Moses went, but God had one last plague to inflict upon Egypt, the most terrible of them all. At last, the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague upon the land of Egypt, and then Pharaoh will surely let you go. One day soon, at midnight, I will move over the country, and then the firstborn son of every Egyptian family will die. Moses went to Pharaoh and told him God's words. If you do not let my people go, he said, every firstborn Egyptian boy will die, and it will be your very own son to the son of the lowliest servant girl who grinds your grain. Then there will be a cry of sorrow in Egypt, such as no one has ever heard before. But the sons of the Israelites will all be spared, and your servants will come on their knees to me and beg me to take my people out of Egypt. This is what the Lord has said. And with that, in great anger, Moses strode away, but still Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites leave the land. Again God spoke, giving Moses and Aaron precise instructions to prepare for that terrible night. On the tenth day of the month, every Israelite household is to get a lamb. Then, on the evening of the fourteenth day of the month, the lambs are to be killed and their blood is to be smeared on the doorposts above every door of every house. The lambs must be roasted and eaten with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Eat the meal quickly and be dressed, ready to travel at a moment's notice. This will be the first festival of Passover, for on that night I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike dead every Egyptian firstborn male, both human and animal. But the blood on your houses will be a sign to me, and I will pass over you and spare your children. Ever afterward, you must keep this day as a solemn religious festival. For seven days you must eat bread without yeast, and there must be no trace of yeast in your house. Because if anyone eats bread made with yeast at this time, then he or she will no longer be considered as one of my people. Moses passed on God's instructions to his people and told them to celebrate the festival of Passover every year to remember the night on which the Lord would spare the Israelites. On the fourteenth day of the month, the Israelites did exactly as God has commanded. They slaughtered the lambs, and they smeared their doorways with blood. Then they waited. At midnight came, and the Lord moved across Egypt and struck down every firstborn son. From the highest and the lowest of families, no one was spared, not even the cattle in the fields. Pharaoh awoke to a great cry of sorrow resounding across the land. For there was not one Egyptian household that had not lost a son. Immediately he summoned Moses and Aaron and told them to take the Israelites. Be gone, he cried. Take your people and your flocks and your cattle and go. The Egyptians were anxious to get rid of the Israelites as soon as they could, because they feared they would bring further misfortune down upon them. Go quickly, they shouted, or we will all be dead. So the Israelites left Egypt in great haste. They had just enough time to grab their unrisen bread before they set off. Over 600,000 of them, with their sheep, goats, and cattle, 
the Israelites had lived in Egypt for more than 400 years since the time of Joseph. But now, at last, they had their freedom. The Lord said to Moses, Dedicate your firstborn sons to me, and remember this day for all time. The day the Lord your God brought you out of slavery in Egypt, and when your sons ask you why you are celebrating this festival, tell them the story of your captivity and release. And so Moses took the body of Joseph with him so that he could finally be laid to rest in Canaan according to Joseph's last request. Then the Israelites set off towards the Red Sea, the first stage of their long journey to their homeland. All the while, God went with them, sending a pillar of cloud to guide them by the day and a pillar of fire to light their way at night. Now it's time for our games and activities. The first thing we have on our list is the plague song, and it's sung to the tune of This Old Man. Ready? Let's begin. First God sent plague number one. Turn the Nile into blood. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number two. Jumping frogs all over you. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number three. Swarms of gnats from head to knee. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number four. Filthy flies. Need we say more? All the people in Egypt are feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number five. All the livestock up and died. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number six. Boils and sores to make you sick. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number seven. Hail and lightning down from heaven. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number eight. Locusts came and they sure ate. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number nine. Total darkness all the time. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. They told Pharaoh to let them go. Then God sent plague number ten. Pharaoh's son died, so he gave in. All the people in Egypt were feeling pretty low. Finally, Pharaoh let them go. For our activities this week, our games are Leapfrog and Statue Tag. Leapfrog is a game where one person jumps over another person, and the person who jumped first then becomes the person who is jumped over. So it is a repeating cycle game. The second game, Statue Tag, is a form of freeze tag, where when you get tagged, you pose into a statue pose, and then you are frozen in it until the game ends. For our crafts this week, I have a printable pharaoh headdress, which I will include a link to, and you will want to print this out of cardstock paper because you will be gluing and fitting this together. If you have regular paper, that will work too, but it will be thinner and more likely to break. The pieces will end up glued together and you can use a piece of string in order to attach it to the child's head after it has been cut out, colored, and glued together. Our second craft is a paper plate plague necklace. It is an Egyptian styled necklace made out of a paper plate. So the first step you'll want to do is to cut out a small thin strip that goes inwards towards the center of the plate. Then you will want to create a circle using a household item and cut out the in inner circle of the paper plate. 
then if your child cannot fit the necklace you will want to adjust it by cutting small strips out of the necklace point area then after that's done you're going to take a ruler and you're going to section off portions of the necklace into 10 sections one for each plague then you can go over with your child which one comes first second third and so on each necklace will be a little bit different because the illustrations will be your child's own making for snack this week we have some really fun things to do with jello so the first snacks are either using blue or red jello and you will be taking either gummy frogs or gummy fish for the blue jello you'll want the gummy frogs because it is the plague of frogs for the fish you will want red jello because that is the plague of the nile becoming blood so the fish will go into the red jello as you make it and the frogs will go into the blue jello as you make it it's fairly simple and you can follow the instructions on your gelatin packages and if you are making homemade gelatin i would love to see it as well our second snack is pretty simple and it can be done by pretty much anyone it's normally called ants on a log but this could be locusts on a log and you'll want to take either almonds or raisins or another nut or if you can eat nuts and you will spread a nut butter or nut butter alternative on top of a slice of celery and then you will place the almonds or the raisins on top of your celery slice that is covered with nut butter and that's it for our snack i think that's all the time we have for this week so thank you very much everyone for helping me make this possible and now it is time to close our eyes fold our hands and bow our heads as we pray thank you god for taking care of me i know you really care Help me, God, to show others your love that I can share. Lord, please help share with the families your love and help them realize that even as they have to care for others who may not be doing as well, you are always there for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you very much, children, for joining me for Sunday School this week. I hope to see you again. Bye!